Alright, what's going on everybody? This is Sam from Zrodem and Mebet. In this video we'll be discussing the top 2 uh, parlay and the uh, lock of the night as part of the Patreon $5 tier. If you're seeing this from, pa from Patreon, thank you very much for your support guys. You guys keep this channel running. If you're seeing this open from YouTube, stick it to the end and show you how to support uh, the channel in the end. Guys, I apologize for my voice, it's not the best today, so I'll do my best here to, to make it clear for you guys. So I'm joining two cards here, both uh, PFL 9 in 2021, which is the Playoff 3 and the UFC. When it's been 30, Chikadze versus uh, Barboza. So despite the name of the Patreon tier, I don't have the lock of the night here one more time, guys, on any of these cards. And the reasons are, uh, on the UFC, I'm not totally too confident on any guy. You know? And on PFL, I haven't been able to go through the entire card. I actually selected uh, just a couple of fights that I thought that, I, that, 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 that the favorite would be a strong favorite. And these are the discussions that I'm going to be having here with you guys, right? So I'm going to be doing uh, the following. So the, the discussion is here. This is my the way I'm doing things. I'm not recommending anything, obviously. There is a disclaimer here if you want to read. But uh, I'll, I'll be breaking down real quick the, the Bobby Moffat and uh, <clears throat> Bobby Moffat and Jason Knight fight and Antonio Carlos Jr. versus Emilio Sordi. The rest of the breakdowns you guys can watch it uh, later on on YouTube. I'm going to be recording this video later on, right? <clears throat> so just to talk real quick about the, the PFL and how do these guys match up. So as you guys saw in the spreadsheet, I'm uh, reading Antonio Carlos Jr. here. I'm slightly confident there. There, you cannot be too confident on Carlos Jr. But this is a, a matchup for him to win. How do I see this playing out, guys? Sorry, he said that himself that he wants to go back to his origins, that he wants to be a striker in this matchup. That's what he means. I think that what he has to do to win this fight. Obviously, we know that Carlos Jr. is a very strong BJJ player. He developed his wrestling throughout the years and his um, striking. Sorry. Though is the better striker of the two, at least he's more seasoned. He, you know, technique by technique, it's not that different, guys. I'll be honest with you guys, but I think the experience on sword striking could be the difference because Antonio Carlos Jr. he doesn't like uh, to feel frustrated on fights. He doesn't like when he can't take things to the ground. He feels frustrated on defeat, and he ends up making mistakes, pushing himself too hard, guessing. So he always has this problem, let's put it this way, not a psychological problem, but uh, as, as a fighter, you know, uh, he struggles to, to go through uh, the trenches, you know, to, to grit and to push hard enough and, you know, to keep grinding. That's, uh, he doesn't have much his sort of mentality, but he has the talent. And Emiliano Sordi, he doesn't have the best takedown defense in the world. This guy is a power puncher, he has technique on the feet, he's not easy to submit or anything. He has skills from top, but he's mostly an offensive fighter. He doesn't fare too much well on the defensive part. You know, the same can be said about Antonio Carlos Jr. So it's a clash of styles, two aggressive guys going at each other. I think Antonio Carlos Jr. get this one done, guys. He's the better wrestler here. If he gets to the ground, he's probably going to take Sordi's back, going to control or to get a real, real naked choke. So I'm slightly confident there because Carlos Jr., he lost two good strikers before. He He's not uh, doesn't have Sordi's experience in terms of, terms of uh, the amount of fights, but he fought higher level competition. You know, he was in the UFC and etc. So I think he's gonna be able to take it to the ground, uh, take Sordi's back, either finishing or most likely uh, control this fight and uh, be able to you know avoid the bombs and just uh, have his way on the ground. You know, so Tony Curtis Jr. by decision. I, I like this one. I like a straight bet on him because he could submit. Sordi, very little chance for a knockout, but not, not impossible. Bobby Moffat versus Jason Knight, very good fight in the featherweight division, you know. As I put to you guys, I like Moffat here a little bit. The reason is Jason Knight's a tough guy, but, you know, man, he's uh, been so many wars. He's been KO'd quite some times, you know. And he, another guy that doesn't have a good takedown defense, he has an excellent guard, a mission control, arm bars and uh, triangles, you know. Bobby Moffat's no slouch on the ground though, this guy is a good wrestler, he's a good grappler and uh, on the feet it's quite competitive, could go either way, Knight could even have a small advantage if uh, he would keep uh, would keep his discipline, but you cannot trust Chase on Knight, you know, this guy will brawl, he's gonna keep the chin high, he's gonna get uh, tagged and he's gonna try to show that he's a tough guy, could be even knocked out by Bobby Moffat, who is not the biggest puncher. 
but still to me Moffat is going to be able to keep it standing uh, not keep it standing he's going to be able to you know to strike a little bit this night not going to get caught most, most likely and then he's going to be able to take it to the ground and hold top position the question can can Bobby Moffat uh, land on side control to have a dominant position I think he can because his takedowns are not based on uh, power doubles or you know wrestling in a sense that to shoot uh, you know a single or double like from far he likes to pressure guys and shoot when they get to the to the clinch to the cage and end up on side control so I think this, this is a good matchup for Bobby Moffat I'm quite confident on him as well between the two I'm a little bit more confident on Tanya Carlos Jr. but it's a little bit tricky is this zone where you know I, there is always uh, an error and everything and I'm saying this it's in between there so more or less same confident on both of these guys a little bit more confident on Carlos Jr. okay so this is what I would like to break down to you guys you know and uh, also an interesting thing on uh, especially Moffat and Jason Knight since they both were in the UFC I can pull up their stats here on UFC stats you guys can see that uh, you know Bobby Moffat has a good uh, take down defense take down average you know so he shoots quite a bit you know he has good accuracy too and he's a, he also has good takedown defense. Whereas if you see Jason Knight, I didn't put this all this up before. So Jason Knight, as you guys will see here, much lesser takedown defense. Doesn't shoot that much, you know. This is a little bit uh, skewed, you know, because uh, yeah, Jason Knight. After if he doesn't start landing, he also can uh, you know stand at the mirror for quite some time. I think Bob Moffat has a little bit more volume too, you know. So. The Wolfman should win this one, right? So this is uh, why I'm a little bit confident there on, uh, on Moffat, okay? And uh, as I will discuss with you guys, and uh, maybe you saw this video already, uh, depends on the order you saw this one, Jamal Emers, I was more confident on him than I saw the weightings. Man, Sabatini looks like a tank, doesn't he? You know, the guy looks solid as a rock. But Emers is a little bit taller, longer, so I'm still keeping my pick. You know, I'm still quite confident on Emers, but I was thinking that Emers would be much bigger than uh, Sabatini. Actually, now I, I look at them, Sabatini looks even bigger than uh, than Emers. Not taller, not longer. Maybe it doesn't wouldn't have the speed advantage as I was expecting, but. Man, he's gonna grapple, gonna be tough to to deal with Sabatini, but still, I think Emmer is the guy to do it, and uh, he should win this fight. So I'm betting him too, and uh, I have a prop as one of my top picks here. And I would say that the uh, rod and Lee go the distance. Just real quick, the reason is Lee gonna struggle to fish the rod. Very little chance for a knockout. Not big chance for a submission. So Lee probably will. If he wins this by decision, the rod could KO Lee, especially if he starts landing. Kevin Lee is, you know, starts hitting shots and doesn't do anything. I don't think it's gonna be this way. I think Lee gonna fight a smart fight. You know, he's not gonna try to brawl with the bigger man. At least I think he wouldn't. Maybe he's gonna start getting caught and get emotional in the fight. Could happen and then end up getting KO'd. But I think he's gonna fight smart and gonna try to grapple. If he's not gonna grapple all the time, he's not just gonna be there to eat shots against the rod. So I think this go the distance and uh, put in some money there. And also Sam Alvey by KO, this is my pick. And uh, Alvey should be able to KO. Uh, Wellington Turman as Turman. He's still too young uh, to the UFC in my opinion. You know, the guy will try to push too hard and I think he's gonna get caught by Sam Alvey. At plus 200 there is a good value there. So this is more or less the proportion that I'm thinking of guys. Obviously, obviously tweak this a little bit at your own risk. You know, you could go less on the rod and uh, and uh, lead by the distance, but a little bit more on Avi by KO, or if you like one of these fighters better than the others, you know, maybe, I don't know, put 20 in this on, on everybody. So this is more or less the, the proportion. Take uh, this to your, at your own risk and uh, consider. But this is probably my top picks for the weekend. All right? So guys, I hope you like this video. If you like, please like, subscribe. So uh, just to show to you guys the rest of the Patreon tier, so this is part of the $5. So for $10, the, the early releases, the videos that I make, and I put up uh, a week ahead. Unfortunately, for the last two weeks, I was pretty busy with my regular work, so I was not been able to do this, but uh, the consistency is key. This will, things will get back to normal. So this is a, uh, 
part of this package plus I put all these analysis with my comments you guys can analyze this with more time on this uh, patreon ten dollar tier right I have also this uh, the same analysis for your on spin 30 which I shared with my patrons for before you know so you guys have access to this and uh, for fifteen dollars it's uh, all the prop bets that I'm taking line by line so you guys can see what I'm doing as an example here you know this is a little bit outdated than each update some of this closed so this is the, the idea on this one and for fifty dollars the ultimate package everything that I that I can show plus line by line all the bets you know and uh, not only the props line by line but all every single bet that I'm doing so if you trust what I'm what I show here if you have seen it before you can just take advantage of this right so guys again I hope you like this video please like subscribe share it to your friends I'll talk to you next time Sam from Zero the Bring the best most consistent and transparent betting strategy for you.